Welcome back to the Venom Workshop. <clears throat> so today what I want to talk to you about is uh, how to take care of your electric ATV or dirt bike. Um, depending on what kind of battery you have, um, there's a few things if you want this to last. These will literally last years and years and years and years for your kids. They'll get many years of enjoyment out of them. Uh, and we can always keep them going. We just need to know what's kind of going on. But I'm going to give you kind of a rundown on the things that you want to do to make sure and take care of your units so they don't start falling into disrepair and uh, and then you, you just can't use them anymore. So here in Canada, it gets very cold. So some of these units you'll want to, uh, especially if the machine's going to be staying in a garage that's not heated, it, the temperature here can get down to uh, very, 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 very cold. Um, in Celsius, it can easily get to minus 30, minus 40 degrees, and uh, and that's cold. And if you get to minus 40 um, with a lead acid battery, so these two units here come with lead acid batteries, and if you leave them out in the cold to minus 40, the battery is definitely gonna freeze and split. This one is a lithium. Lithium doesn't do very well in minus 30 or 40 either, but the thing is, is it's great about these is you can remove the batteries and get them out of here. Now, the 1500 watt is a little bit different. It does have a, a lead acid battery system in it as well, um, but you can also take it out as well. I have videos on how to take out the batteries. If you're not gonna be using your unit in the winter time, um, I definitely recommend you take out the batteries and store them in a, a nice, cool, dry place uh, where it's, it's, it doesn't have to be uh, super temperatures, but anywhere uh, that's just above freezing is perfect. Uh, like if it even goes down to minus five degrees Celsius, that's not gonna hurt a lead acid battery. It's only when they dips into them really deep temperatures. Now on these units, it's very easy to remove the battery, especially on, on uh, our Canadian version here. So if we come down here, all you'd have to do to remove the battery, just unclip these clips, uh, unplug it and pull the battery unit out. Again, the same with the 1300 watt here. It's the same type system. You just uh, unclip and unplay. Now, when it comes to this battery system, same idea. Um, you just have to take off the footwell right here, and then you can unplug the battery and take it out. There's a band over the top that holds it. But again, it's easily removed. And again, when we come to the 1500 watt ATV, same thing. The battery is right there, uh, straight down there and it can be pulled out, you just have to take off the boot well. Again, I have videos on how to remove the batteries. So that's something you're gonna definitely wanna do if uh, if it's gonna be very, very cold, you'll wanna make sure and get the batteries out. Um, there's not a whole ton of maintenance, excuse me, to do on them. Um, chain tensions would be one of the biggest ones. You wanna make sure that your chain stays nice and, uh, nice and tight, but you don't want it over tight. You don't want your chain to be piano string tight uh, on that on these units because you're just gonna end up snapping something. It's just not worth it um, So every year you're gonna want to make sure and check your chain and your sprockets for where um, We do have them in stock and it happens chains and sprockets both wear down. It's a normal thing um, it's, it's just like anything else parts are gonna wear down eventually after a couple of years uh, now the 1500 watt ATV here does not have a chain system on it. It is a direct drive to the transmission on the back here. So on the back here, rather than doing a chain tension, what you would want to do is make sure that your diff is nice and full. Usually you would change the your diff oil maybe once a season. It's a 80W90 gear oil that goes in there. Uh, I have a video on how to change it. Again, um, that's part of the maintenance of the year. You'd wanna check your disc brakes, especially on this uh, unit here. Check your pads. Your pads are very easy to see. You can look straight down here and you can see uh, pad wear. Um, and you can do that on both sides and on the front. The same with these units. They all come with disc brakes. Even if they're only cable uh, brakes. Uh, this has hydraulic, but we get to this unit here. It's a thousand watt and it has disc brakes as well, but it's a cable drive system. So you can adjust those, very simple to adjust. Again, back here, same thing. 
Um, I actually have a video on how to change the pads in these, so if you do wear out your pads, but it's just something to keep an eye out for now. Um, and also, like I said, you're gonna wanna keep an eye out on your chain tension. Chain tension's easy to find out. You just reach underneath here, tap your chain, see how much tension you have. This one's perfect. It doesn't have a, it has maybe a little less than quarter of an inch play in it, which is exactly what you're looking for. And the same on this unit here. You can go to the chain. This one has about the same, about a quarter of an inch play on it. That's what you want. And, or uh, sorry, a little less than a quarter of an inch. Now on the new 1300 watts, um, there's a chain tensioner and the chain's already tight, but then it has a, another recoil tensioner under here that keeps pressure on the chain to keep it nice and tight. The tighter your chain is, uh, and the, the, uh, the more it's supposed to be where it's supposed to be, the less wear you will get on your sprockets. If your chain is loose, then tight, loose and tight, loose and tight. It will create a lot of wear on your sprockets and uh, it'll literally just burn the sprockets right off of it. I've been riding dirt bikes for years and I've burnt off a lot of sprockets. <laughs> Excuse me, so I know what it's like. Now when we come to the dirt bike, it's the same thing. <laughs> this is a 1600 watt dirt bike. It is uh, chain driven too. Again, you're gonna wanna check the tension on your chain. This one's so tight right now, but it's super tight because it's brand new and the chain hasn't been stretched yet. So when you first get your unit, your unit is gonna have a super tight chain that's perfectly normal because you do want the chain to stretch a bit. So you're gonna let that stretch out and then uh, just keep an eye on it over the years. Now, this bike here, the battery is inside here, so if again, if you're gonna have it drop down to uh, temperatures minus 35, minus 40, and it, that doesn't make a difference once you hit that temperature, if it's in Fahrenheit or if it's in uh, Celsius, it's just cold. Make sure and take this battery out. It does just unplug and uh, come out. Um, basically just two bolts, one here and one here, and the battery pack comes out. You can unplug it and bring it inside. The bike can stay outside in the cold um, don't leave it outside in the elements, obviously, but you can put it in the garage where it's cold. It, once you take the battery out of it, it's not going to harm anything on the bike. Same with every other unit. Once the battery is off, the rest of the unit is not going to be damaged or harmed in any way. Um, so that's good. Now, when you, uh, you're going to want to keep an eye, like I said, on your brakes, things like that. Now, another thing to keep a, an eye on is your tire pressure. So if you're, and I mean this for every one of these units, doesn't matter which one it is, any of these units, keep an eye on your tire pressure. Um, on the dirt bike, it's a little bit different. You want a little bit more pressure, but most ATVs are between 10 and 15 pounds in the tires. That's all, no more than 10 or 15 pounds. That's it. I'm not talking about the dirt bike. I'm talking about the ATVs right now. Um, but it, the best thing for you to do is look at the side of the tire and read what max load is um, so this tire here, max load is, is uh, 32 PSI. So I would probably go around uh, 25 pound range. Um, and, and that would be perfectly fine. So, uh, like I said, the it, dirt bike tires take a little bit more air than, than your average, uh, ATV tires, but your ATV tires are, like I said, 10 to 15 pounds is all you need. If you don't, if you put that at any higher, you put like 20 pounds of air in those things, it's going to feel like number one, you're riding on stones because your tires are gonna be so hard. Um, but people don't realize when you do that and you put that much air in there, you actually cause stress along the, um, the grips here like this, and it'll literally make your tires crack. So like I said, 10 to 15 pounds is all the pressure you need in those tires. No more, no less, 10 to 15 pounds. Um, and it'll also give you a better ride. Your tire will stay uh, nice and, um, and semi-soft so it's not uh, like, like I said, like riding on a set of stones and uh, it'll give a lot more life to the, um, to the life of your tire. Like I said, 10, 15 pounds, you're good to go. Another thing is, is uh, when your machine gets good and dirty, make sure and clean it off. Now, I don't want you guys taking no pressure washers to these. It's still an electric unit. That'd be like opening a Tesla and pressure washing the, underneath the, the hood with it or all over the top of the motor. You can't do that. You're gonna end up burning something for sure. So, but you can wash these units. I, I, I everybody uh, says, well, I, I washed it, I sprayed it out with the hose. You can spray it with the hose even. Just don't spray in any components that you're gonna see. 
like uh, underneath here, there's a controller. If you sprayed water directly at that from a, from a pressure washer or a hose, obviously it's some water is going to get in there. But you can give it a little drizzle around. You can spray it down here, and then you can wipe it off and uh, and take care of it that way. Again, with this one, same thing. Underneath here, you have a controller here. Don't soak the controller with water. It's it, it's a it's still an electric unit, right? So it does. It is manufactured to ride around and stuff in puddles and, and do things like that. Don't go driving at a lake or nothing like that. It all comes down a lot to it is common sense, right? So this is an electric unit. You can definitely wash it off and you can wash it off with a, with a cloth and that's the way I recommend washing it off. You also want to take care of your frames. Make sure that your frames are nice and washed off. So over the years of just building up and letting mud sit on your frame, it's going to rot. It will cause rust. Some machines, like this one, come with uh, grease nipples. So there's grease nipples at the at the A-arms here. So all these swing arms have grease nipples. So you can go ahead and just grease those, give them a quick grease, at least once a season. So a couple pumps <clears throat> and you're good to go. Like, these are very low maintenance units. So you don't have to change oil or any of that stuff. It's uh, it's all nice electric units. And these these little tips that I'm giving you will make it last years and years and years. Another thing is check your lights once a year. Go along, try everything out, make sure your lights and everything work. Turn on this, lights, make sure that works. Horn, just a quick cursory look to make sure that everything works. Make sure all your buttons work, make sure all that stuff works. If it doesn't, get in touch with us right away. And the reason I'm saying that is because if you leave something, and it might be riding fine, but in the long run, something going bad in a switch, say going bad in this switch, could be ground out through the system somewhere, and over time it could cause more damage. So just let us know. Our techs, most of them uh, know exactly what's going on, and, and they can help you out really quick. Okay, check this, check this, check this. Um, so again, I, what I'm trying to do is get you to extend the life of your electric unit. And again, if uh, after years, the most things that we have, the problems with these, is after years and years and years of use, you have to buy a new battery. But that's normal. It'd be like your car. If you're uh, starting your car every day and you've had your car for five years and all of a sudden the battery goes bad, well, you have to buy a, ba a new battery. And that's, <clears throat> that's normal for everything. It's normal for any of these units um, or it's normal for your car or truck same thing um, so some of these units also have hydraulic brakes so you can come up here uh, at least once a season take a look inside here make sure that you haven't lost any um, any fluid and you just take the, the, the top off of the screwdriver again like I said a lot of these have um, hydraulic brake systems so this the 1500 watt does the 1300 watt does so you can check here and here now the 2000 watt units, the American and the Canadian unit have actually a cable disc brakes. So you're good to go there. You don't have to worry about any sort of fluids in them, anything like that. Um, and our 1600 watt dirt bike also has hydraulic brakes. These are more of a Shimano style or, uh, or mountain bike style brake. But again, they're still hydraulic. Um, so again, you can check the level. Now to check the level on these, just remove this one torque screw right here. I think it's a T30 or T35, if I'm not mistaken, um, and take it out and it, you can see the, the level of the fluid inside there. Um, so when it comes to um, brakes, that's all taken care of. Another thing is make sure you lube your chains well. Uh, a nice, um, I like a, a nice chain butter um, or, or a really sticky, sticky chain lube that will stick to the chain. I don't want it to just as soon as, like WD-40 is great for a really quick lube job on a chain, but it won't stay. It'll just, it'll, it'll get, like it'll go away very quickly. So chain butter or a good thick chain spray works really well and keep your chains really well lubed because uh, a, a rusty chain is, is a brittle chain. So what will happen is your chain will get rusty and then it'll snap and then you're looking at calling us anyway. I'm not going near the 1500 watt because again, it, it doesn't have a chain. It's just a direct drive brake from the motor to the transmission. But this, uh, the bike has a chain. So you want to keep an eye on your chains. Like I said, a rusty chain is a brittle chain. It's something that'll just snap. 
So that's it guys. So that's a, a real quick video on how you can take care of your electric unit. So it will last you for years and years and years and you and your children will get as much enjoyment out of these units as possible. Uh, so like and subscribe guys and hope to see you in the next video.